Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're gonna learn how to use Epiton Drift plugin. I've been using it lately a lot and I just love it. It's easy to use, great sounding. It's available with all versions of Epiton Live. So let's learn how to use it. First you have your oscillator section where you will have your first your oscillator one and you can select different waveform here. So you have all of your classical waveform but they added two new waveform which are shock tooth and saturated. I personally love the shock tooth which sounds pretty good. And each waveform has its own shaping control here. So you have this shape parameter here where you can shape the waveform. And this shaping effect will be different for each waveform. So for example, if you choose square waveform, you will have more like kind of a pursuit effect and you can see how the waveform is changing here so shape will be great to create new sonic possibility but also i love this parameter because if you modulate it slightly it can be great to add variation and modulation along your track how i like to use it is to slightly modulate it with uh, an nfo for example and one of the great things about drift is you have a lot of direct access to modulation close to the parameter so for example here you can just select your modulation source which will be your lfo and then you can select the amount of modulation right here so it will slightly modulate the shape and this direct access to modulation is pretty smart and handy and i just love that back to normal you can enable or not the oscillator and speaking of we're gonna enable oscillator 2 which you could think is actually the same but it's a different layer which is smart feature as well you have a little bit less waveform i'm gonna choose the sotus and you have the octave control like you have on oscillator 1 this is pretty handy if you want a richer sound for example you will set your second oscillator at a different octave either lower or higher for example if you want to add some very just nice top hand harmony you go to octave upper compared to let me add a bit of reverb and then here you don't have shape but they add the tune and i like the fact that you don't have the same than oscillator one because it push you to things differently or doing things differently and so the tune is gonna either slightly detune the oscillator which is gonna result in the richer sound and the detune sound <laughs> And you get this kind of chorus the tune effect but if you go a little bit more like for example around one semitone you can see you get this nice weird tone that is perfect for techno but you can obviously go a bit more classic and for example they tune seven semitone to get this kind of classic vibe you have as well a retrigger button that you can enable by default it will be free running which means your oscillator will be always running but you can select to retrig. this is nice if you want a more percussive sound uh, it will restart the cycle of the oscillator every time you press a note <laughs> And then finally you have some noise generator so again you can activate deactivate here and always nice to be able to add a bit of noise and you can control with the volume here so you have as well volume control for oscillator one and two one thing that if you crank up the gain of the oscillator above zero uh, it will reach the maximum headroom of your filter which means it's gonna create some nice distortion <laughs> So this you really need to play with the filter, the resonance as well, but that can be very nice for some bass sound, for example, to add a bit of bite. So let me put it back. And then finally, you have your direct access to pitch modulation here. So either with an LFO, for example, to add a bit of vibrato, if you go like 1%, or a pitch envelope to kind of create this. And then you can select which oscillator goes into the filter. You can bypass some to go straight to the output. So for example, if you don't want your noise to be filtered, or let's say you use oscillator 2 as kind of a sub oscillator and you use a high pass filter, but you don't want obviously the high pass filter to affect the oscillator too. So you will do that for example. And then yes, we go into our filter. So you have two type of filter. You have the type one, which is a new filter they implement and that's only on the drift for now. Uh, it's a filter called DFM1 and it's 12 dB, but you also got the type Type 2 which is uh, this time a 24 dB filter MS20 style filter so this one you can already find it in other Ableton device and then like on any filter you will have control of the frequency and the resonance So the best way to have an idea of how your filter react is to modulate it so here again you have direct access to that and here I'm gonna have my envelope to modulating the filter So 
but that's give you an idea a little bit how they sound and another simple feature but very smart is you have straight up an iPass filter so that can be great for example if you design pads or sound that are pretty rich but you don't really need the low or the mid you can just like high pass that One thing I like with the Halpa filter is that you can also think about it a way that you can modulate later. Another thing, especially in techno, often removing the fundamental frequency of your sound is gonna kind of give a very nice character and this is something you can easily do straight up with a high pass filter here. Another thing is then you can transform your filter kind of like a band pass filter now. So you don't have direct access of modulation on the high pass filter, but we'll see later you can do this in the mod tab. And then finally you have the key tracking, which is kind of a classic feature. Basically your keyboard will affect how your filter reacts. So the lower the node, the lower your filter will be, the higher the node, the higher your filter will be. Other cool things with the filter, you could see like you have visualization here, but you can stretch up, grab the point and kind of set the filter the way you want. Then you have envelope here in this section. So when you click envelope, it's changed. You have as well the visualization. So the first envelope is a classic ADSR envelope. Nothing crazy about it. It's controlled the volume. And then you have a second ADSR envelope that you can use to control everything. Here is controlling the filter. But the great things about this envelope is that you can run it into a cycling mode and then it's behave more like a LFO. <laughs> with a rate and then you can see you have a triangle shape here but you can change the shape and make a custom one with the tilt so if you go to the left you will be more like a so down if you go to the right you have more like a so up and obviously you can shape in between all of this value and you have a hold as well to kind of have a date <laughs> So yeah, really create new kind of LFO shape and the rate you have as usual in Hertz, in millisecond and sync to the BPM. But they also add the ratio one, which is going to basically follow the key of the keyboard. And this is going to be crazy, especially if you want to do some kind of uh, FM modulation, frequency modulation. So I'm going to remove here the modulation and crank up the filter. <laughs> and we're going to use this envelope too, again, to modulate the pitch. maybe on the high pass filter and then when I'm gonna move the ratio bring down the hold you can see you get this kind of metallic FM sound So you can see the amount of possibility you can have with that obviously the Hertz and mod works well as well with the, the FM mod if you go to a faster rate and yeah in case you still need the LFO obviously you will still have your LFO here so this is more kind of a classic again with the rate here the mod so that I have just shown you is the same done for the envelope too and then you have different waveform all of your classic waveform but they had as well some new one wonder linear envelope exponential envelope that I will come back in another video which are great as well and again you have amount and again direct access to modulation so yeah pretty cool now if you want to for example modulate the rate like I like to do you don't have direct access here but you can just go to mod you can select for example the pressure which is the aftertouch which is controlling uh, you LFO rate and then if you select this to modulate the filter okay and if I bring down the rate I'm gonna press on my push and I will press more to kind of faster the rate <laughs> So yeah, that's a lot of things that you can do. It's an MPE compatible device, so you can have as well slide. But yeah, here you can select your source and then the destination and modulate positively or negatively. And then we have our kind of voicing mode. So you have different way you can play. So the poly mode, which I was playing, obviously you can play up to 32 voice in the same time. But you also have a mono, which is more kind of for lead or then you have the glide for example if you want to have a pitch modulation between two notes let's go for example 120 to show you uh, you can select legato as well so you can see when i selected mono you have this little parameter here some of the mods have that and they are unique to each mod basically for this one mono it's gonna add some extra harmonics especially in the low hand so you can hear So 
this is pretty nice if you want to beef up your sound okay then you have the stereo mod basically the stereo mod is kind of like the poly but a bit more in stereo to really hear this one you need to play a little bit with the drift so i'm just gonna crank up the drift okay so this is your poly and this is your stereo you can hear how much stereo you got if you don't have drift you have kind of a bit less stereo but still have a little bit but just adding a bit of drift work well so all the modes basically drift will have an impact and then finally you have a unison mode again work well with drift So just the unison mode use four voice. So for example, if you have your voice set in four, uh, you cannot play chord. You need you need to set up more. So let's set to 32. So like this, we are safe to play chord. But yeah, you can make some big fat analog type sounding preset with. And then finally, you have a couple of utility like the volume, how much the, vo the velocity will affect the volume, the transpose button, not pitch bend. This is if you have an MPE MIDI controller and the pitch bend range. So yeah. All right. Thank you for watching and see you soon, guys. Bye bye.